Welcome, welcome, welcome. This is Jim Dar's Tone Shifter channel where we show you how to take any guitar and make it sound and play better. So join me in the Guitar Cabin, our musical sanctuary from day to day life, as we explore another really cool guitar project. I'm excited. Let's get to it. Well, last time we took a look at this inexpensive 335 copy, the Firefly FF338 and decided we're going to do a couple of things to it. Number one, we're going to round over the beveled edges of the frets to make it a little smoother on the hand, make it a little more comfortable. We're going to straighten the neck ever so slightly. But the major thing we're going to do is actually change the pickups out. Not by replacing them, but by rewinding them and replacing a few components in the pickup, depending upon the quality and what we find in there. So it starts by taking the strings off the guitar, getting the guitar all set up, and we'll show you rounding over the frets here shortly. And then we'll get into the heart of the sound of the guitar, which is rewinding the pickups and modifying the pickups in a way to make them sound much better. Okay, so I've got my triangular shaped fret edge rounding file and I'm just gonna do do a couple of strokes like that I think is all we need. The whole idea is to deburr the edge of the fret so it doesn't feel sharp and has slightly rounded profile to it. And you have to do it on both sides you have to be careful so you don't jam the file into the guitar body and do damage. Uh, certainly that's happened to me as I was learning and even sometime recently because I wasn't paying attention so pay attention just do it ever so slightly use a correct three-sided file with flat edges on it that way you won't gouge into the fingerboard if you're doing this on a maple board uh, tape it off if you've got any questions about your ability to do this tape off the fingerboard A lot of guitar work is very tedious, boring stuff, but you have to know what you're doing. You have to have the right tools and you have to have the right approach to the tools. And you also have to have the right checks and balances in place to make sure that you're not uh, doing anything that would do damage to the instrument and make it less playable. The whole goal here is to make it more comfortable in filing the frets and we'll round over them shortly here with another tool that I made uh, years ago that uh, smooths the edges and smooths the fret tops down. Well, let's take a look at what I'm doing. Now I'm using that tool to actually smooth the edges down. I'll go over the tops of the uh, frets as well to make sure that any fine scratches are out of it. I'll start at 320 paper and gradually work my way up to 800 or a thousand grit and then I'll clean and oil the fingerboard. I have to tell you one thing this guitar surprises me in the quality of workmanship, the sound, the tonality, the playability right out of the box. The pickups really aren't that bad except they're very microphonic and we'll discover the reason for that in a little bit and it'll be shocking to you as it was to me. But this guitar is a very playable guitar without having to do really anything to it. Um, cosmetically I like to change the knobs and I don't like the poker chip in, on the 335 copies. So here I am. Uh, starting to take a look at the pickups to kind of assess what we've got and see what we need to do to make them better. Hmm. Very interesting. I certainly wasn't expecting that. Let's see if the neck pickup is any different. Here the pickups actually look a little unexpected. It looks like it's wax potted, which is a surprise because of the squealing. It might be wax potted very, very lightly. Also, the base plate 
is either aluminum or stainless steel and my bet would be stainless steel so let's explore a little further I need to try to take the covers off and I'm going to use a little, uh, old fret saw to cut the um, solder off of the uh, base plate to free the covers so let's watch and see what happens Well, I've got the cover off and looking at the pickup, it uh, looks pretty normal. Looks like a ceramic magnet. But what's puzzling is it looks like it's heavily wax potted. Again, a puzzler. Now that we got the pickup off, let's take a look at the pickup routing. It actually looks very neat, very well done. Okay, for the four shockers I told you about, first the screw poles are not really screws, they're just slugs. Secondly, there's standoffs on the bottom of the molded pickup bobbin. This is actually an ingenious idea that eliminates the need for plastic or wooden shims. These pickups were heavily, heavily wax potted, as you can see by the picture above. But they still are very microphonic and squealy under loud volume. So what? why is that? That's still a puzzler we have to solve. But perhaps one of the biggest shockers was the bobbin geometry is different than a standard humbucker. Although it looks the same, it's three-eighths of an inch of coil height compared to one-quarter inch height for a standard humbucking pickup. It's a huge difference in the geometry as you can see. What I've done here is taken a picture of my coil being wound to one-quarter of an inch versus the bobbin on the winder, which is three-eighths of an inch. You can see the huge difference in coil height. What wasn't a surprise is I found a ceramic magnet in it. And you can see compared to the Alnico I put in, the dimensional smallness of the Alnico versus the ceramic. Now here are the Firefly bobbins being rewound on my coil winders. I'm actually using a same TPL spec that I would normally on a humbucker is one of the formulas that I like. It's a long process to come up with a formula that you like and sometimes in your head you think, oh I've got this idea, it's going to sound great. It doesn't. Well this is maybe a hint at what's to come here, but we'll solve for that and actually end up producing an excellent sounding pickup that I think everybody will be impressed with on this guitar. Winding the pickups is actually pretty simple once you've got the machines all set up and I had to readjust these two machines to accommodate for the additional coil height for the Firefly and these are the gear mechanisms that allow me to adjust the configuration of the pickups being wound off of the winding machines and assembled. Once they're fully assembled, they get dipped in uh, paraffin wax and beeswax to get a good saturation. I don't like to saturate mine completely with wax, but I, I do like to keep it a little light on the inner windings in order to get some of that vibrance and uh, liveliness that uh, good humbuckers are known for. Here's a close-up of the pickup on the guitar. You can see how high the fake screw poles are in relation to the top of the bobbin. This will cause some problems that we'll find out in a few minutes. So in theory, it's supposed to sound good, but in actuality, as you'll listen in a second, it isn't quite what we expected and not good enough for me. So we'll have to listen and judge for yourself. Okay. 
So the big reveal. I think I've covered the uniqueness of these pickups pretty thoroughly in the pictures and conversation. But the proof of the pudding is how does it really sound now? And um, I don't know, we'll find out. That's the bridge pickup, volume and tone wide open. I'm sorry, that's the neck pickup, volume and tone wide open. So, so my opinion, I don't know what to think. I don't know what type of alloy this is. And these fake screws are just, looks to me like some type of cheap pot metal. So I don't know what the, uh, you know, composition of it is, if it's 1022, 1018, 1010. Uh, I have no way of knowing, and that does affect tone. The other thing that's being affected here, I think, is the pole pieces protrude a good eighth of an inch out of the bobbin. Now what I might try to do is um, press these existing pole pieces out and put in a pole piece that I know the um, metal content. I'm not real happy with the way this sounds. Of course, it goes back to that old saying, it sounds good on paper, it sounds good in your head, it sounds terrible to your ears. Well, this one I wouldn't say sounds terrible. Um, I think it's an improvement of what it was, but it doesn't sound good to me. So one of the things I'd like to be able to do is to press these pull pieces out, press new pull pieces in without disassembling the pickup. I don't know if I would be able to do that. Uh, worst case, I'll just swap it all out for one of my pickups that I know sounds good. So that's my honest opinion. Uh, let me set this down and decide what to do, and we'll go from there. So after going back to the drawing board, I ended up pressing the fake screw piece out and pressing a slug piece in, and I think it sounds great now. Hey, well, we did some things to the pickups. The biggest thing I did was I eliminated these fake screws, which is, um, I think, some just cheap metal. So here's a close-up of those fake screws that came out, and I'm glad they're out because I think they were definitely hurting the sound. So what I did, the slugs that were in here originally, I left and turn them around into the screw position. The slugs I put on, which were 1010 steel, unplated, I put in the slug position. So this acts like a, the height of the, uh, if it were a traditional humbucker, the same as the height of a actual adjustable screw nut. And here are the results, more of a traditional looking double slug look also uncovered a grounding issue with the neck pickup uh, because of the stainless steel base plate. The stainless steel base plate that was in there um, doesn't really solder very well to it. So what they did at the factory is they had these three holes here and three holes, I'm sorry, two holes on the other side where they had eyelets in them which served to um, get a good continuity between the wire and the actual stainless steel base plate. What was happening was, I don't know if I can show you this or not, is the eyelet started twisting. 
so it was not getting a good connection. So after a couple of attempts to resolder this, I concluded I'm just going to swap it out for a 50 millimeter uh, nickel silver base plate that I had that I know that worked. So that's what I did, was able to solder to it real easily. Got it all back together. So let's hear what it sounds like. And I got to tell you, changing those slugs out really helped. <coughs> because I wasn't happy with the results with those fixed screws in. So this is the, um, everything's wide open. This is the neck pickup. Both pickups. Bridge pickup. So the bridge pickup. set the same way as it was previously. Neck. I think these pickups sound really good like this. Um, it's an interesting formula with a higher coil height, but the same TPL as what I normally do in a quarter inch quarter height for a humbucking pickup. So it's an interesting tonality. Put my 1010 slugs in. Where's my pointer? I'm always losing my pointer. Put the slugs in, cut the, kept the existing slugs and flipped it around to kind of act as the pole piece up a little bit higher. So not only do we have a good looking pickup now, we have a great sounding pickup as well and I hope you agree. Sounds pretty good. This guitar is a beautiful guitar, set up very well, but how I check the relief is I press it the first fret, I press down where the neck joins the body and right about halfway I should have a little bounce to the string about a business card or so. I like my necks fairly straight and that's exactly what I have so I'm not going to adjust it but when you adjust these necks they typically have a double acting truss rod in it so it's important very important to make a minor uh, like an eighth of a turn max check see what if it, the neck is coming back up like this or if you're getting more relief if you're getting more relief then you're turning it the wrong way typically to decrease the amount of relief in other words have an angle that goes like this to, to go more straight you want to turn the truss rod clockwise now, not all truss rods are the same, so it's important to, to make a little turn, see if the truss rod's working. If the neck was really warped, I would take all tension off strings if I'm just adjusting just a fraction of a fraction of a fraction of an inch. I'll do it with the strings uh, under tension. Uh, very important to get the right truss rod adjustment, either an Allen wrench or a, or a socket. So I promised I'd give you some specs on this Firefly FF338. Again, it was built in 2019. 
It's a traditional semi-hollow body, F-hole design. It's got a traditional style bridge and tailpiece. It's got an arched top and back made of multi-ply with maple on the outside. A traditional center block that appears to be maple. It has single edge binding on the back and multi-layer edge binding on the top. A 24 and 3 quarter inch scale, 12 inch fingerboard radius. Uh, it came with two ceramic magnet humbucker pickups. The neck measured 11.7K. The bridge measured 12.03K. Very microphonic and muddy in the mid-range to my ear. The rewound pickups with the Alnico magnet measured in at 7.57K for the neck position and 7.82K in the bridge position. Neck width at the nut was 1.718. At the 12th fret, the width was 2.077. And at the end of the fingerboard, it was 2.255. The neck depth at the first fret was 0.921. At the 12th thread, it was 0.948, and I can say that the neck has a nice C shape to it, very full with those dimensions. So my take on this, this is a flawless guitar, except for this one part right back here, which no biggie at all. If I played it out at a gig, I'd do more damage to it than what it had. The pickups, sound good. The thing that I mentioned earlier that I was shocked about was the um, pickups were fully potted except the cover wasn't. The cover was just glued on so what I would normally do as I said earlier in a situation like that is pop the cover off, put some silicon uh, between the cover and the top of the pickups uh, with, with a color that matches but just a, just a little bit in a couple of places so it so it'll uh, stop that uh, microphonic feedback. Um, the other thing that we mentioned that's uh, important to note is that the height of the coil for these humpbucking pickups was three eighths of an inch. Normally it's only uh, a, a quarter of an inch. So it's, it's a full eighth of an inch taller, which, which isn't a problem but you just have to configure for it. And I've never seen a bobbin for a humbucker with three eighths of an inch. So this is new for me, at least. Maybe it's uh, not new to somebody that does a lot of work on all these import guitars. Um, this, the screw pieces were f fake screw pieces. Um, and it turned out it's a huge difference in tone when you put a, a 1010 steel in as opposed to this is probably just cheap pot metal. I don't even know what it is. The uh, base plates, stainless steel, which surprised me. So they, they put a lot of money and effort into this pickup, whether they uh, sourced them from somebody else or they had them built to order. The other uh, FC, let me make sure I got it right, FC. 50 and FC 52 pickups that I've seen out there actually did have real screws. So I don't know if this was an anomaly or uh, something that happened. The magnets were, uh, as you can see, with the ceramic magnets were thicker, more like the size of a Gretsch Filtertron uh, than a uh, regular Alnico. I put an Alnico magnet in there, fully saturated, fully charged. Um, and I think this sounds fantastic compared to the way it did sound. Um, it's got a nice crunch to it when I push it, but it's got the clarity of string to string separation. So the other thing that we did with the pickups that's worth noting, it wasn't a surprise, but it was like very thin wire, like 44, 44.5 gauge wire. And I put 42 gauge wire in poly coated, single nylon coated. I believe was the spec on that. So took the pickup covers off. Absolutely no evidence of wax potting here at all. So these were obviously soldered on to the pickup after it was wax potted. Why they would go to the trouble to not secure 
this uh, pickup from Microphonic but by 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 um, insulating it somehow with uh, either wax or some type of uh, silicone um, or some type of uh, material to let it vibrate less. The we had the same problem in one of the earlier episodes. The uh, the squealing flying V um, was the same issue. It, it, it the cover was vibrating. So take a look at that if you want to find out more about that. Um, my take on this guitar. And I, and I can't attest to the quality of the new ones coming out. I know that somehow they're all over the board. I'm thinking the importer may have these made in different factories or maybe switch factories along the way because I've heard recently there have been some issues with QC, but it might be just a, uh, a demand type thing where they have to get stuff out quicker. But this guitar... Um, and I've, I've owned Gibsons, I, I've owned, you know, top of the line Fenders, I've, I've owned Gretsch, I've owned Guilds. This guitar equals them now that the pickups have been changed. So I would recommend, you know, if you've got the coil winding equipment, do what I did. Um, if you don't have that, then find a good boutique builder or a used uh, a name brand. Uh, and and see what you can do. See see if you can put them. It's fairly easy to put them in. I just stretched the internal wires out through the hole, soldered a uh, about a six or seven inch length of wire from here to the solder joint, and pushed it all back in the control cavity. So I don't want to touch the electronics until they start becoming problematic. For two hundred bucks and a pickup rewind, I don't think you can go bad at all. Um, oh, here we go. FF338. I would say if you can get one at a good price, grab it. Um, this is surprising. I'd say grab this. So, that's where we stand. So until next time, keep your comments and suggestions coming in. I really do appreciate them. Subscribe to the channel and ring the bell to get your notifications. And as always, be kind, be smart, have fun, learn something new every day, and be safe. And remember, we make pickups.